Hey there, welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton, this is Cadence. Over here on the Mighty Mix, we have Seth. He was literally beatboxing earlier, and now we get nothing from him. If you want Seth to have a microphone, don't start that conversation, he'll kill me. By the way, <laughs> welcome to On Set. We are <laughs> trouble already. Is <laughs> he throwing stuff at me? <laughs> I brought Seth to the gaming store and he bought some magnets. <laughs> Expect a video for him on his channel on how he puts magnets on stuff. All right, so anyways, uh, today we're going to talk about soft boxes. Oh, my voice changed. It must be getting to be that age. Uh, and we're going to kind of mess with them a little bit. Uh, typically, when I first started shooting many, many years ago in the Stone Ages, <laughs> I worked for a bunch of photographers and they all did the same thing. You'd walk in and they'd be like, so we'll set up a soft box in here. And I hated soft boxes. I was like, oh, soft box, that's what everybody does. It's boring. Ugh. Then I became old and now I didn't know. So, but then, but then I, so I worked with other stuff. I worked with beauty dishes, I worked with hard reflectors, I worked with umbrellas. And what I realized was it's not that soft boxes are boring, it's that what some of those people were doing with them was boring. So today we're gonna play with the idea of using soft boxes and trying to get stuff that's a little more dramatic. A lot of this has to do with a few uh, key uh, kind of concepts that we'll go through. One of them is hardness and softness, which we'll talk about as we go. Another one is what they call fall off, because I know when we did the last video, people are streaming, people are like, fall off? Is that that game, that video game called fall off? Fall out. Fall out, right, not the same thing. It's different. You game called fall off. <laughs> All, right. Your career. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna mute myself here, because I'm getting, for some reason, as soon as I go live, my, I, they, the kids call it, I blow up on my watch. So anyways, we're gonna use some soft boxes, a few different styles to kind of show you why I might use one or another, kind of create some fun images and we'll go from there. Any questions you have, please ask in the chat. Also, Seth will likely put it there. Uh, I have a podcast, if you guys are not aware of that, check it out, A Voice with Daniel Norton and you can, don't have to look at my pretty face, you can just hear my pretty face. Your it's pinned, voice. boom, voice. my pretty voice. You can hear my pretty face, voice. All right, so, <laughs> by the way, I, I'll point out here kind of randomly, this is the uh, Adorama Pro imaging <laughs> mug. If anybody has one of these mugs, let me know in the chat. That would be local people, of course. All right, so here we are. We're gonna make a portrait. I perfectly, purposefully did not put up any backgrounds or anything, because I just wanna, because what I wanna talk a little bit about is, like, what I say, fall off. So you get a soft box, normally, like, of course, if you wanna be cool, because everybody wants to be cool, they're like, I'm gonna get an Okta. I was watching those videos and they were out of the beach and they all had an octa and the girls were looking all dark and underexposed and the sky was all blue. Yeah. So let's use an octa. So an octa just basically means the shape of the box is that of an octagon versus like a rectangle or a square or a strip. This, I have a grid on this one or an egg crate. What the octagon is good for is getting your light to what I like to call wrap around. Now there's gonna be the scientist in the comments that's gonna say light doesn't wrap around things, it moves in a straight line. But what that means is if you've got a subject and you put the octagon close to them, more light will kind of come around because remember people are three dimensional, right? And we're creating a two dimensional representation of a three dimensional object. So we want the light to get to the other side of them. It will do that very nicely in an octagon shaped box because it kind of spreads out wide. You could of course turn your, or, uh, your rectangle box on its side, which will have that kind of effect, but then you'll lose your top down. So this gives you more of that effect. That's the main reason to use an octagon besides being cool. It's large, right? Large box is going to make a soft. Softness and hardness of light is, is determined by the size of the box or the light source relative to the subject, right? So our subject is gonna be like a three quarter portrait of cadence. This box is three feet tall. It's roughly the same size. That's gonna create a soft light. Soft light means our shadow transition will be gradual. It doesn't mean no shadows, it means shadow transition will be gradual. Now I'm gonna remove this grid, which is gonna be great on the microphone. Excuse me while I cough. All cool photographers leave the grid hanging. Someone's asking if you can do a dramatic portrait on a chair. Can I do a dramatic portrait of a chair? On a chair. On a chair, I mean I would love to sit down, maybe once we get going. <laughs> yes, I, I could do that. All right, so we're gonna, 
<laughs> yeah, well, we, we can have her. Would you like to sit down? I mean, she's wearing, so, okay. This is interesting, right? Because I want, I mean, I'm guessing that the person asking about the dramatic portrait on the chair is because they're thinking, I like dramatic portraits on chairs. And, or I'm trying to make a dramatic portrait on a chair, and I've tuned into this broadcast, and I'm thinking, I'll just have Daniel do it for me, and I'll know how to do it. But you've got to look at the subject, how they're dressed, all this other stuff. This is not necessarily the best outfit to wear on a chair. It is long. It's going to be li limit the leg positioning, so it's not ideal, but we can try to have her sit down in a minute. Okay, but let's start here. All right, this is my Profoto B10. I will try to name everything I'm using as I go. Not like a, a, like a regular name, but just the product name. And it's in a three foot Profoto Octa, like I said. This is going to be, I'm gonna go traditional on this. Tradition. And we're gonna go up, and we wanna place the box, you know, kind of in front, off to the side a little bit, more or less uh, close to the camera, kind of scooping across a 45-ish angle. This is gonna give us good coverage across the front of the subject. It's far enough away that the fall off, which we'll talk about in a second, won't be so dramatic, and we'll get, you know, effectively a soft light. So let's, look, let's look through this. I'm gonna turn the thing on. I'm gonna use what's called TTL, which means through the lens metering. What that effectively is going to do is, we won't have to use a handheld light meter, we'll just use the meter in the camera. That's the simplest way to think about it. I'm gonna come in, and we're gonna make a test shot. So here we go. Now, I didn't do the black frame, which I'll do in a second. All right. Again, this is why I hate soft boxes. <laughs> let's, let's absorb this shot for a second. No, it's standard. It's good, right? It's a nice soft light. We can see there's transition, shadow transition, right? Because we have neutral. Well, we have highlight, neutral, shadow transition, shadow. It's soft because that is gradual. The fall off, as it turns out, is how quickly we go from not the nature of the transition, like the soft versus hard, but the, how quickly we go from shadow to, to, to dark, or from light to dark. We can see that her face is lit up, the wall is gray, the wall is clearly white, so it's not quick fall off because the wall's getting light on it, right? Enough to make it, let's say, underexposed by a stop or so. Okay, I'm gonna to try to mute whenever I cough, and if I do not, then you'll get a cough and then me not talking, which will be maybe interesting, I'm not sure. Okay, so this is fine, is right? This the largest octagon you would use for is this the largest octagon I would use? No, I used to love a five foot octagon. So when you're deciding how large of a light source you want, assuming that you want soft light, what we have to think about is how much space we have, how close we wanna put the light to our subject, and uh, you know, how, so how soft we want it to be, right? So if I used a five foot octagon from the same position, it would be larger, thus softer, we'd have even more gradual transition of, of shadow. But we could also push the light in closer to her if we wanted to, so if we were in a smaller space, one of the very first thing people always come to me and they're like, I want to get a little soft box because I have a small studio. <laughs> no, you don't. If you're in a small space, you want a big box because that will give you the softest light because you've got to cover more of somebody up close, right? So you want, a, you want a large source for that. So I find three feet to be good for like kind of three quarter portraits. A five foot used to be my favorite because I had a really small studio and I would just leave it set up, but I find this to be a good general size. So it's not the biggest by far. They also make seven footers, which are pretty awesome, but uh, I don't have a seven footer, so. When you get to that size, I tend to go with umbrellas unless there's something very specialty I want to do. And that's just a matter of cost. Seven foot softbox is very expensive. Okay, so we have a nice beautiful picture of Cadence. What we can do here with the softbox is we can do a couple of things. If I move the light closer to her, using the inverse square law, then what we'll end up getting is more rapid fall off. So let's demonstrate that briefly. I'm gonna bring it in nice and close. Now it's also gonna get softer technically. I'm in TTL so it will meet, we'll re-meter. Okay. And now we can see how quickly the light is falling off to shadow. See how quickly it is? It's still soft because look, here's our neutral. But if we look at the space between highlight, highlight to neutral, to neutral, to shadow. I guess this would be neutral, right? So we're looking at neutral here where before we had neutral all the way back into here. That's fall off. 
Now, this is such a large box, and she's pretty close to the wall, and I'm in a white studio, so we're still getting light on the background. It's a little bit darker. If we wanted to get more light off the background, there's a few things we could do. We could use the feathering technique, which is to take our box, and we're gonna turn it and use the edge of the box to light her. This does a couple of things. Number one, it confuses your subject because you're not pointing the light at them, and they're thinking, why aren't you putting the light at me? Pros never point the light at the subject. That's like an amateur tool thing. No, so you're gonna point the light this way. What's gonna happen is all of this light, right? Think about it, like her face is here, right? Getting the light. All of this now can see her face. So what we're gonna end up with is more light on that side of her face, even though we have great fall off. We're also gonna have a darker background. Assuming the exposure stays the same, which it should. Yeah, okay. So now, once again, We've got quick fall off, but now we have wraparound. So this side of her face is more evenly lit, right? We still have the same fall off. Look at how quickly we go into shadow here, right here, right? But see where the neutral starts. This is now called feathering and wraparound. This is how we're starting to work our box. Because remember, here you were like, I bought a three foot octa and I'm done, but really, just with a very simple technique of taking our light and putting it closer, and then positioning and using a feathering technique, what we've created is a much nicer exposure. Her skin is bright and crisp, she has nice shadow quickly, and it falls off into the background, which gives her separation, enough separation with the dark hair, but not, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't make her just like dull into the background. And part of that is because hair is, hair has oil on it, right, or in it, Right? And that's what makes hair reflective, which means that if we put the, the light where more of it can touch her hair, we're seeing more detail in her hair. See that? Which then gives her that three-dimensional feel. Make sense so far? Any questions? No, chat is quiet. Do not be quiet, chat. Ask a question. Ask me what I had for lunch last night. What? Shoot up. Hit like, by the way. You should like and subscribe. I don't know what this means. This is usually a get out of here, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, if you, ha if you haven't already, go ahead and like the, the video. Assuming you're learning something, let me know if you've used feathering before, if this is something that you use, if you uh, use octagons and what size you use. So we're gonna, I'm gonna just put, gonna bust out the grid because I have a grid on here just to show you what a grid does. So a grid or an egg crate is basically a way to control the spread of the light. It's important that, you, that we say it that way and not, it doesn't focus the light. Focusing a light will make it more intense. A grid does not make your light more intense. It just brings in the, the, the field that it covers. All right, so stand by while I put this on really terribly because I'm not very good at this. You would think after all these years I could put a grid on really well. What's that? Do this again? Seth usually does it better than me, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it really quickly. I got this. I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm on a. He's got to do it. He's got to put it on for me. Is, I'm going. Speed. Yeah. The speed is very important because clearly the faster you shoot, the better for the photographer you are. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, more like Asper cream. All right. So. Okay, my white balance, I turned off the, I muted myself, I hope, hopefully I'm being muted when that happens. What's your white balance? So white balance is set to 5,000, which is where I keep it. This is my normal daylight white balance for how I like my camera to be. So if you normally leave your camera in daylight or you use it in 5600, it would be the equivalent of what I'm doing here. I just leave it at 5,000 because Seth told me to. Would a four foot octa be enough for a full body shot? It depends on how hard or soft you want the light to be, but yeah, I would say so. You can certainly cover the full body with the four. All right, so again, I'm putting, I'll get, I'll get a wider, I'll get a shot of her body in a second. Okay, so we've now put the grid on. The grid is gonna absorb some light. It's gonna control our fall off a bit. I'm in TTL, it will automatically re-meter. And we'll take another shot. Okay, now we've got increased contrast, right? Also, we've got that cool blur effect that we like from the you know, 1970s movies. Ooh. All right. Cool. All right. We'll edit that part out. Okay, we got increased contrast. <laughs> uh, there we go. Nice job. We've got increased contrast on the face, 
okay? Because that's what the grate does. It also controls the, fa the fall off. So we are looking from this to this, depending on what you like. Here it's like corporate cadence. And here it's, here it's like cadence after dark, right? And so there we go, same, same thing, right? Same light, grid. Adding an accessory, changing the shape, adds contrast, controls the fall off of the light. Okay, nice and simple. Okay, so here we go. We're going from basic softbox from where we started here to something a little bit more advanced by just by using the position of the softbox and feathering. And then if we add an accessory like a grid, we can have even more uh, control. Now, of course, you could add additional lights, fill, you could add a hair light. Do not go back and watch my fill light video to see how to not ruin that last shot by putting in too much fill light. <laughs> All right, let's switch boxes though. We're now gonna switch to my favorite box. This is the Shamira extra, extra small rectangle. It is shallow, silver lined. So this box is 16 by 22, it is a rectangle. When I use soft boxes, the main goal that I have when I'm using a soft box is control of where the light falls. The smaller your light is, the, e the, the source, the easier it's gonna be to control where it falls, but it's also gonna make it harder, right? So we're gonna put the light closer. The closer we put the light, the quicker the fall off. So it controls it there as well. This is a, a recessed front rectangle, which again, controls the fall of the light. So this, this box is very good for control. You could add to it a grid if you want. I don't have a grid. If somebody wants to send me a grid, you know my address, it's in the comments below. No, there's no. <laughs> Shamira, if you want to send a grid here. Okay, so RFI and OFC boxes, that's a the designation from Profoto. Uh, RFI boxes are uh, kind of a more heavy duty box. Uh, OFC, OCF? Yeah. OCF are a lighter weight box. They don't come apart as much but they're way uh, more kind of portable in that sense. Like the RFI box is thicker and heavier. The OCF boxes are really, and I think they're not heat, as heat resistant. OCF cannot handle. Yeah, OCF can't handle like the, the, the powerful modeling lights and some of like the packs. If you have like a pack and head system or you want to put it on a hot light, you definitely don't want OCF for that. But if you want lightweight for travel, OCF can be good. And then removable diffusers. Yeah, and OCF doesn't have a removable front diffuser, right? Yeah, so OCF is, is uh, you know, they're portable. The whole idea of off-camera flash, because I guess you put the RFI on your camera. Okay, so would you, could you potentially have uh, issues with white balance if you're using multiple brands of lights, because they're all slightly different, potentially? You could, sure. It really depends on what you're shooting and how much it matters to you. If you're doing product photography and for some reason you had to use different brands, and I'm even talking about different brands of like soft boxes, like I have a Shamir soft box, I have a, I have a uh, Pro Photo soft box. You're going to want to, if, it, if you're doing something that's that color sensitive, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you know the color temperature of all your lights. You can use gels to correct them. Uh, Roscoe makes a pack, a color correction pack that's got like all your like minor changes, like your magentas and that. But it, that's like super high end commercial stuff that most portrait photographers are not gonna worry too much about. If you're using completely separate brands and they're, some of them are let's say less than uh, at the level of others. <laughs> so I'll tell a story about a brand that we don't, that Adorama doesn't sell so I won't get banged by. Uh, Alien Bees. So there was a time where there was a light company named Alien Bree. I don't know if they're even still around. So these lights were really inexpensive and they had the great marketing Oh, it sounds familiar. And everybody thought they were the best things. They were the bee's knees. They were cheap, but what they had was something called the Vagabond Pack, which allowed you to go portable and run it off battery, which is super expensive otherwise. It wasn't like today we can get lights so cheap. Well, I bought one thinking that's really great. And I went to Miami and I shot with it on the beach and I used a beauty dish and it was fine. And then I came back to New York and I plugged it in and I used it with my Profoto packs and heads and it was garbage because it didn't match. It was way too far off, I couldn't make it work. So depending on the work you do, and I was doing fashion work, which obviously that matters. If you're just doing portraits, it may or may not make a difference. It really depends on how far off it is. So you're gonna have to judge that uh, on your own. Okay. Yeah. Can you, can you achieve the same results with continuous lighting? Can I achieve the same results with continuous lighting? Yes, I can. And how about a hard deep dish reflector with a diffuser? A hard dish with a diffuser would not be a softbox. Right, it's a whole different thing. That could be a whole other. Uh... You should do the beauty dish. 
Yeah, we could do a, a, a hard reflector uh, demo at some point. Hard reflectors handle the light different. Good hard reflectors generally have some kind of focus point or something special about them that makes them unique. So they're not really, there is nothing that is a softbox but a softbox, right? There's whatever you're using. Now, that's not to say you can't make great shots with whatever you got, but different things have different qualities. Hard dishes aren't the same as a, as a softbox. Which means the, which because we're inevitably going to get this question now, the pop-up thing that they call a beauty dish that's basically a softbox is not the same as a beauty dish. It's just not. It's not bad, it's just not the same. All right, so smaller box, same kind of situation. Well, we're going to... never silver when they Oh, right. <laughs> okay. So again, in close, now we've got a rectangle. Okay. Okay, so here we can see a difference, right? We've got, the, this is what the grid, I guess this would be the closest equivalent, would be this. We see the difference here, right? To the right, you've got the, the small softbox. To the left, you've got the octa. Remember, the octa has more surface. Remember I said how when the octa is sideways to somebody, like I'll show it like this, because you probably might not be able to see it from the camera. If this is the softbox, but we'll imagine it's an octagon, and this is my face, if I take it instead of like this and I do this, all of this can see my face. But with a small softbox, only a bit of it's seen here. So we, we get more dramatic fall off, even though we still have the, the very soft light. There's, there comes a point where, where the light can only be so soft, right? And we can look, again, some people look at how dark the shadow is, and that's not what you want to look at. What you want to look at is edge transition. How do we transition from highlight to neutral to, set to shadow? And these are roughly the same as far as transition. One just is fault. One just is just darker because it doesn't have the wraparound. My converse, thank you. These are new black ones. I'm wearing the green ones lately, but you know, we can bustle the green one. So now we've got, again, right out of the box. Now you're thinking, well, Daniel, why didn't you just use this box to start off with? Because it's the best. Yes, it is. You can find a link to this in the description. <laughs> that is true, but okay. The reason why I wouldn't just come out the box and use, come out the box and use this is let's go back to our question about shooting something that's more full length. Well, this box is great for this because, again, it's 22 inches. Cadence's head is 17 and a third inches. So, <laughs> so it's nice and soft, right? But when we look at our entire body and we back this up to get enough coverage, proportionately, this light is going to become smaller. And when the light becomes smaller, the light becomes harder. I am a TTL, so it should automatically compensate. I am using a softbox, yes. And now what we're getting is terrible, right? <laughs> she's looking at me, she's like, what are you doing? Why, you know, if you show up at a job and you take your little tiny softbox and you put it that far away, the, the subject's gonna look at you like that. They're gonna be like, huh? Why are you doing that? Don't you know that the size of the source relative to the subject is what makes it soft? But let's take the same spot, roughly, and let's switch to the other box. So again, that's the small one. Switch to the big one. That's roughly the same spot. Okay, here we go. Now she's like, ah, yes, that's an appropriately sized uh, box for, for the, right? See the difference, right? Harder, softer. You see, shadow transition, right? Flat shadow. Highlight, uh, neutral shadow. See the difference? And of course, we can go, I, I'm just keeping it uh, horizontal because that's what I'm doing right now, but we could definitely do a vertical shot and you'll see. I think this, yeah, this, I think this tripod goes vertical. Kids these days, they don't like to go vertical. Nobody goes vertical anymore, yeah. only with their video. <laughs> What's this Instagram thing? I've never heard of it. All right, I'm not gonna do full length, but I'll do that much, boom. All right, there we go. So we still maintain with the large box, a nice softness, light in the background. It has fall off, because remember, there's a grid on the front. We can remove the grid, and we'll get even more coverage. 
all day is removing. If this was like a, if this was like a cooking show, I would just have a bunch of grids. Like start one with a grid, one without a grid, one with a white grid, one with a purple grid. All right. Yeah, white grids are pretty cool. All right, all right, so here we go. But note, by the way, if you're shooting vertical, this is more like a fashion thing. So when you're doing that, you gotta be cool when you're shooting. You don't like you all crunch down like this and you gotta just like stand here like this. And then that's how you do it. And boom, now we've got nice soft light covering the body, soft box, but catalog, boring, soft box. That's not what we're doing today. We're doing funky, uh, dramatic soft box. So, one thing we really wanna focus on is getting the lighting close. Plus, if I was going to do this, I might use the third softbox, because I mentioned I was gonna use three softboxes, because they say on YouTube that you're supposed to use three things. Like, three is a thing that gets people to, to get excited, so. Well, let me know if that's true. Do you like to, do you watch a lot of videos where people use three things? Or is there some other number that you like? 27, maybe? I don't have 27 different softboxes. I do only have two speed rings for some reason. I don't know where my other one went. Somebody wants to send me a speed ring in the mail. You got my address. It's in the description below. Um, yep. I see the but it's I did not do the black frame because I forgot. I got all excited. Thank you. That is a good question, whoever asked that person on the internet. Now. You're looking through the camera, you're like, the studio's bright. Look at how good you look, Daniel. But it's just a softbox lighting the space, right? Didn't you forget to do a black frame because you weren't on your, on your game today? Yes, yeah, so you're right. Okay, so one thing we do when we very first start, well, we can cut this part and put it at the beginning, right? Well, one thing we, <laughs> we want to do is establish that the only light that's going to affect our shot is our lights. The way that we do that is we turn off all of our flashes, and we do the following. We set our camera at the lowest ISO within the normal range. For this camera, that is 100. We set the shutter speed at the maximum shutter speed within the normal range. We're not talking about high speed sync, that's a whole other thing, which is 200 for this camera. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our aperture until we get what is effectively the black frame, as I call it, because it's a black frame. I know it's not a very original name, but once we have the black frame, we take a shot and we look and capture one, and there it is. So all this time, because I've been at these settings, if I did not fire the flash, what you would have got was this. Now we can look here in our uh, adjustments and we can bring the exposure up. We wanna be, you know, two stops-ish. There's only about 1.8, so we're a little bit brighter than I'd like it to be. Maybe I'd wanna go to F8, but we're fine. We wanna, this is basically our shadow base. So anytime that we, if we're, if let's say we shot in post, we shot in post. Let's say we shot, and then in post, I wanted to make this brighter. If I started bringing it up more than a stop or so, I'd start to get these ugly LED lights and, you know, affecting my shot. So you want to make sure you have enough range there. So that being said, I think I might actually go to a 7.1. 7.1 is what the cool kids go to. This whole F8 thing, pff, it's a passing fad. All right, anyways, I'm gonna take this, this box here. This is my second favorite box of all time. Not my third favorite. Seth is not like this. The yep, the spilly box. It, it, it yeah, yeah, he doesn't, he, does, he hates it. No, I'm just no. kidding, no, no, he doesn't, no, I'm kidding. All right, this is the Shamira Pro 2 box. You will notice that this box has a flush front, as do a lot of the boxes from Chrome. What this means is, remember what I said before about the other box, it had a recess front so that could help control the edges. This is gonna be more spilly, right? So this is the soft box that's like an umbrella in that sense where you're gonna get more kind of overall spill. This is the one that I would use if I was shooting multiple people. Like let's say we were shooting two people and I just had the one box. This would be where I'd lean towards if, you know, if I didn't have the octagon. I like this especially for product photography. I use this a lot for product photography. Okay, so, but I'll use it on the, Cadence because, by the way, Shamira boxes are some of, if not the best boxes you can have. And this is one of the least expensive boxes you can buy. So there you go. People often say I use expensive stuff, but this box is pretty cheap, actually. Yep, exactly. They're great for if you're gonna bounce and use fill and stuff like that. Because this, much like the Okta, is gonna give us that spill that we can use, right? 
Still bring this guy in. There she is. <laughs> Sorry about that. My allergies are. Okay, here we go. All right, we got the Pro 2 there. It is in group A, uh, B. Remember, I'm just using TTL here. It's not, well, I was gonna say it's not magic, but in a way it kind of is magic. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. Oh, yeah, look at it, look at how gorgeous. Gorgeous light across, but look at the fall off here. Look at how gen gradual it is. Let's actually bring you up a little bit so you're not like looking down. Yeah, there we go. Good, all right. So we can look at this and we can see that just like with the Octa when we had it opened up without the grid, this transition is really beautiful and really soft, even though this is technically a slightly smaller box. But even more so, look at the background. Look at how nice and even it is. Where's our Octa? No, it's not the same shot, but you see how the Octa has a bit more of, of the darkness on this side here. So if you're looking for a more even background, this might be nice because this is giving you spill out of the sides a little bit, right? It's giving you more spill. So does this mean it's harder to get something more dramatic with this? Yeah, it does actually, but we can just bring it in real close if we want to really. This is the light I might use if I was going to do what they call split lighting. So somebody in 1974 wrote a book and they made up all kinds of names for lighting. Mm -hmm. They were like Bob lighting, Sally lighting, Rembrandt lighting, right? And all these things. And who knows why they deem different things different ways. But this one they decided to call split lighting, which basically means you're lighting half the face. Yes. I use the Seth lighting which means just good lighting. All right, here we go. Again, TTL. Now we've got this nice split light, right? Half the face, but it didn't, doesn't have that like bleh, black on one side because of where I'm placing it. And look at how gentle the transition is here. Highlight, again, this is highlight. You want to highlight on the face. I know that people are tempted to use flat, flat, flat light. This is what we're trying to get away from. We've got highlight, because of the shadow with her nose, obviously, to mid-tone, to shadow. Now, if you thought the exposure itself was a little bit hot, you could just bring the exposure down. I mean, that's not really a big deal like that. But you, but you definitely want to make sure you've got this, this shape. And ideally, what you're gonna get is, and we're gonna actually do this now, you wanna also throw a highlight on the other side. That gives us the, the full wrap. This is the very simple technique that you learn in, when you're a painter, and we are painting with light. Oh no. <laughs> oh well, all right. I'm gonna try something unique and different or, or probably something I do every, every time, which is, I'm gonna use a reflector. I think I wanna use a silver one. Do we have a silver? Yep, all right. Oh yeah, no, this is, this, this is a good one. No, this is one's garbage, right? And this is like literally garbage. So I was walking down the street and I found this in the garbage. <laughs> no, actually I made a fluorescent light out of this once. I'm gonna use this silver because I just feel like it. So here I'm gonna to try to do a little bit more of a kind of a, a complete. Yeah, this is, this is insulation. <laughs> I may or may not have taken it from a construction site. And here we can start to, if you wanna kind of clean it up a little bit, you can see that we're actually filled in. And we did an entire uh, session on fill light before. So you can do that because somebody always wants to see it flat. There's, there's at least one person in the comments going, whoa, that's way better. Oh boy, no. All right, oh, I've now, you probably can't see this because this closet is a mess, but there's a lot of stuff in here. We don't have a mirror, do Oh, I have those mirror. All right, so let's create something that's a little bit more three-dimensional to kind of get us a little tighter shot. So, okay, we, we're a bit dramatic here. Let's get more dramatic. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take this light and I'm gonna move it this way. So I don't know if you could, can they see that? And Okay, so basically what I've done now is the light itself is the edge of the light, write this down. This is super important. I'm not just making it up right now. The edge of the softbox is like right at the edge of her nose. This is super important, I swear. <laughs> no. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my light and I'm gonna lock it in the manual so the exposure doesn't change because I didn't change the distance of it. And I'm gonna, oh, I think you blinked, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna get this really, this is your, your bad split lighting, right? The ones like, oh, it looks split lighting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this light 
And I'm going to actually have Cadence turn her face this way, and then up, right? And we're going to work into the light. I know it's in the shot, but. So we're going to start to bring this over so we start to see her eye over here. See how we're getting that? And we're going to work it a little bit. If you want to be able, be able to see it better, you can just put the modeling light on. <laughs> you could also do that. I'm going to turn the overheads off because I'm getting wild. Okay, let's see. All right, so turn a bit more this way right there. Stop. All right. Now we're going to start to get this. And look at how quick it falls off, right? We're getting this really dramatic fall off here. So now I'm going to take this reflector, right, which I mentioned before. I'm not going to use the silver because it's a little silly. I'm going to take this white. I'm going to have you look this way right there, and boom. And now we're getting something that's got a little bit more flavor, right? We've got this split lighting where it actually makes sense, and it actually does something interesting. So if you're going to use split lighting, I find that that's a better way to do it. Make it real dramatic and then bring in a fill. But back to where I was, what I want to actually do is create more of a three-dimensional. I'm going to take this light and switch it off and turn this into a hair light. Oh, hold on, we have to put it on this side. We've learned that last time. Well, I already knew it, but Seth learned it last time. <laughs> that, that cadence can only look in one direction. <laughs> she can only turn one way. Although she trips and falls over. <laughs> she turns you the other way on your eyes. She lies. <laughs> 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 All right. So I'm going to take this octagon. And we're going to use this as our key light, no, learn, doing what we learned before. Right? I'm going to take this guy, put the grid back on, because you know, using grid. Get, now, listen, if you're on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going to put a grid back on. Let's do it. I probably should get another light with a grid. All right, here we go. Then we do this in real time. That way you understand what it, what it could be like on an actual photo shoot. That, that's the real reason why I do this. It has nothing to do with not being prepared. All right, All right so I'm going to take this light. And again, we want to bring it up and in to get it close so we have dramatic quick, quick fall off. And we have the grid on it so that it's controlling the background a bit. And I'm going to go back and turn off the A-light for a second, which is the background light. I'm going to turn this, the octagon on, and I'm going to get a base exposure in TTL. OK, so we're back to here. Remember when we were here before, and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. You know, at that point, you guys were like, that's the best one so far. And then we got even better. We're going to keep going, right? This is pretty good. And you know, sometimes pretty good is enough, but not for you guys. For you guys, only the Slightly better than pretty good is enough. So we're going to. Not the best. Not the best. No, definitely not that best. All right, so we're going to take A, we're going to turn it off. Mm -hmm. Hold on, yeah. I'm going to turn on B, which is the one in the background. And I'm just going to do, again, a TTL exposure here. This is going to be completely bad exposure. Oh, actually, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. No, so, okay, so now this is just our background. You might look at this and go, Daniel, that's a little dark, but remember, that's just our background light. Now I'm going to, or back, a hair light, I should say. I'm going to turn it to manual. I'm going to turn the A light, which is this one, back on. And I get a locked in exposure from last time. And we should be pretty close here. And then we can start finessing it. There we go. So now we've got separation hair light. Nice big light across her face. You know, this isn't dramatic enough for me. I want the little box, right? Or we can do what we did learn before. If I put it this way, less light will come across her face. So we'll go like that. There we go, right? Let's work you a little bit this way. There we go, yep, yep this way, yep. Good, and I'm gonna take the background light and just turn it I'm going to go, I'm going to turn that one down a bit because I feel like that's a little too hot. The cops are coming. We can get this before the cops are here. All right, there we go. All right, now we're getting deeper shadows on the face, shaping it. Again, highlight, neutral shadow. 
we're getting that separation light hair on her hair to give us a more three-dimensional image. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Smoke? <laughs> Blue backgrounds? What do we like? Okay, so right now, again, I'm just using a white background to show you the, the drama, drama, the, drama blah, 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 blah. the drama. We can obviously adjust our background as needed. If we want a different color background, you want a black background, you want a, a red background, whatever, you can put a different color paper there, some fabric, but the white is really here to kind of show you what we got. Full length. Full length, everybody wants a full length. Okay, well, well now we can clearly see that where the lights, I, okay, maybe it's not clear. I think that there's a mystery about doing a full length. Why? I'm curious why people always are curious about the full length. Does it, is it hard to imagine what the full length would look like or, is, or do people have issues with it? I'd love to know. Let me know in the chat. Like, oh, it's just because of the, the, okay. All right, well, I mean, I would like to know. So let me know in the chat if that's the, re is it because we just always do portraits or are you struggling with something with the full body? And if so, let me know and we can try to work on it. Okay, so what's gonna happen here, as you'll notice, is that you know, it's gonna fall off really dramatic, which could be pretty cool, obviously, if that's what you're going for. Here we've got this dramatic uh, portrait. Why is her body so dark down there? Well, I mean, look at where the box is, right? And I have a grin on it. As it turns out, I kinda like this. I don't love that her hands are so dark. <laughs> okay, always, okay, there we go. That's, that's the reason. So. All right, all right, we'll do that in a second, but now I see something. I will come right back to that. I swear Seth will remind me. I want to put some light on her hands. How What's that? that should it should be a separate video. Yes, how to light people's feet full length. Full length. <laughs> yeah, right? See, Cadence is buying into how we do this here. No? All right. You're I'm just sitting here. All right, well, I'm just, you know, I'm asking for your approval. What do you want to spot layer hands? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you don't have those little grids? All right, all right, so we're gonna. You can hold your other grid up to it though. Yeah, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna. Uh, this is a Profoto A10. Thank you, sir. Yes. This is a Profoto A10. So this is a small flash. I can actually control this remotely just like the other ones. Do you wanna zoom it though? Uh, yeah, I zoomed it into the, the closest uh, zoominess. That's the best I can do. It doesn't really do much. They wouldn't, uh, I think no grid. That's fine. Is it? Okay, yeah, all right, do it. All right, so that's in our C group. Well, I guess turn it, we're at, at 7.1s, so maybe make it, put it at like 2.5 or something. We don't want too much. Four, okay. All right, we're gonna aim it in our hands and we're gonna see what we get here. Oh, well actually, yeah, that's fine, perfect. Oh, there you go. Eh, you know what, I, I, the hands are lit, but what I actually want is, can we do it like higher so it feels more like that light's just burning? Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> So what, the reason, okay, so what's happening here is this is cool when her hands are lit, right? We, we show, but we've got this dramatic light coming from her face. That just doesn't look natural. So what I want is the light to feel like it's coming from this top light. So if you could look this way slightly with your face as well. There we go. Yeah, and then we'll, we just want to kiss it and just turn it down a little bit. Or, or up, there we go. Okay, better. It's a different direction. But... Yeah, it's a different direction, but it's feeling now better. The other way we might be able to do this is to just open this up. What about this? Yeah, we'll keep the drama, but yeah, what we're doing here is we're just trying to keep the drama, but I want to get some light on our hands. I don't necessarily care about our legs and stuff yet. Okay. Okay. I'm kind of opening this up a little bit, and I'm going to do a little bit of a tip. All right, so what I'm doing here, guys, I know it might be hard to see is, what's happening is we're getting, I'll show you on the picture when, when we get the picture. So let's get to the, let's shoot one and I'll show you what we're doing here. Okay, so what's happening here is, no, that's okay, that actually kind of worked. Okay, what's happening here is if you look at the original picture, see how darker hands are? But I like this direction of the light, it's just too dark down here. So what I actually want is just a little bit of, you know what I actually want, Seth, I think, is just actually kick off the ground. I just want that her hands down here not to be too dark. If you kick off the ground though, it's gonna go just a tiny bit. Direction. Can we go like that? Wrap this way. If I do this though. Okay. Alright. Actually... Okay, hold well, on, before we do that, 
I'm going to put this back because if you're going to do that, I don't need this. All right, so I'm going to close this back up. What I did was I just opened up. Stack the lighting, but the problem with stacking the lighting is you're not going to keep the feel he's doing right now. That's right. Okay, this way with the face. Face this way. Good. Good. All right, here we go. No, you're good. There we go. That's not bad. The exposure's a little hot, but it's perfect. It feels right, right? That looks natural the way Seth did that. So what we're doing is we're creating something that feels right. I just think the exposure's a bit hot. But otherwise, if we do that, we're basically where we want to be. So we could mess with it a little bit more. The only, now, so, so we have a couple of issues here. So let's, that's cool. I just wanted Daniel had something I wanted to do. So thank you for indulging me for a second. Thank you, Seth. Would you bring her hands closer to her face? Would I bring her hands up? No, I love the pose. I love the mood. That would feel artificial. Yeah, that, that's, oh, yeah, no, 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 I just, I mean. The, the, the point that Dan's doing is keeping the shot the same, but getting the, the result you want. So instead of having to make compromises to get it, he's making changes to get what he has the way you want it. Right, because we're in control of the light here. If you were not in control, then you wouldn't have a choice, right? You'd have to make a conversation. So moving the hands is not a bad idea in that situation, but I wanted this vibe. And I think we did a pretty good job catching it. Okay, what's that? Right, and it could be full length as well. So now, let's talk about full length. So the issue with, uh, yes, please. So the issue that people are having with full length is that it, the fall off, right? And there's a few ways you can handle full length shots. If you're trying to create a full length shot that is dramatic, what you've got to do is light her body in segments, right? So if we want her legs, if we want all the light to be from the side like this, but we need her legs to be lit, the simplest solution would be to get another light. I mean, obviously, if you just had a giant, uh, a strip would also work. Mm -hmm. But if we go, yeah, and we just stack the light. So this is the simplest solution. We'll do a couple different things. But this is a good question. See, I'm always, I, again, people always ask that, and I joke around, but I'm curious why people, so I'm glad the people answered, thank you, as to what exactly they wanted. <laughs> okay, so. This here is, you know, ideally I'd have like two of the matching boxes or whatever just to make it as even as possible, but we're gonna do what we got because this is what I have. So this here is the two foot, uh, you call them two foot, but it's a two by three Shamira Pro 2 box. Again, this is the one that spills. And yeah, we're gonna get it bouncing off the floor. We're gonna get it lighting up her legs. I want to keep it flat though. You don't want to, but, and, and because this light here is tilted down a little bit, I also want this to be tilted. You don't want to have your lights in opposite directions because then they won't make sense, right? We're trying to create a single source. So I'm going to use this. I am going to keep the grid on here because I like the idea of kind of keeping her face a little bit more dramatic, but we'll see. All right, so at this point, all bets are off, right? So we, we're starting over. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go in here both lights are on, I'm just gonna to switch to TTL. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna load up my tripod, and I'm doing a full length shot. If you're gonna shoot a full length shot, you generally want your camera to be like waist height, maybe slightly up on waist height from your subject so that you're not looking up or down, unless you want something really dramatic for some reason, but like a neutral shot. Just because of my space, I'm just gonna zoom to get what I want. Leave a little space around her. I'm gonna leave the boxes in the shot, that way you guys can. Sometimes you have to do that. Now, another way to do this if you don't have two boxes is to use a V-flat, like something from V-flat world, or a regular V-flat, and then bounce two lights into it to, to balance it out. That's another way we often do it for catalogs. Another way you could do it is to, if you only have one light, would be to back the light way up, but of course that's gonna create a, a flatter light, so if you're doing like a catalog, that might be okay. You could take a five or seven foot octa and back it way up here. That would also make it even. But let's just stack the lights and see what happens. This is full TTL, all bets are off. Who knows what's gonna happen? If it looks perfect, I will take credit. If not, I'll blame the camera. Wait, here we go. Nice, okay. All right, it's looking a little horror movie-ish. Yeah, because we're getting the bounce up the ground. Yeah, because this is just not the right book. Yeah. Right, yep. I think that's yeah, it's because of this box. This is box is not the best box for this. So really we should, oh, it's not? Oh. well for this, we should, we should swap the boxes basically. 
Well, no, I'm going to make it work with the. <laughs> it's not the best box for it's this. Box. Yeah, it's very specific. All right, but but the thing is, okay, is that I just want to actually let's just make sure. I want to kind of explain what the situation is before I start fixing because that's people get confused. All right, so we just went with this, right? We're like, all right, let's just stack the lights, right? Because that seems like the most obvious thing to do. But what we get is, well, number one, TTL is wacky and it didn't give us what we wanted. But what happened is the gridded uh, octagon lit her face a little bit, but this light went boom, hit the ground. You can see her feet all light up. It bounced up. We can see it throwing light up here and throwing a, a reverse shadow, basically ba bad lighting. So we know we don't want that, right? So part of that has to do with the fact that this light here is just one of those lights that spills everywhere. So in order to compensate as best as possible, I'm going to take my spilly light and put it on top. I'm going to go like this. And yes, this is going to fall off, right? So if I take just this light, so let's build this up one light at a time again. So now, this is the spilly light up top. This is only going to light the top half of her body. This is in the B group. I'm going to turn, take A and turn it off. This is in the B group. I'm going to light it. We'll see. Boom. OK. Now we've got nice. decent light, right? But we're dark down here. We want more light on our feet, but we want it to feel natural, like it's coming from this source. Now we're going to stack a light that we can control. Honestly, probably that little soft box is yeah. better. Yeah. So I'm going to lose the octa. Even though people love octas, you're out there on the beach. You're like, oh, look at this. The sky is so blue in this shot because I underexposed everything and then went into post and fixed it. <laughs> Seth, Seth doesn't like when I, when I talk about that. Well, you were talking about Miami from the 80s, bro. Back in my day. Well, I'm not talking not from the 80s. I was a baby in the 80s. But, you know. This is why you think. All right. <laughs> I do not like the speed ring, but it's okay. Yep, that octa is done. All right, so here we go. Blue, right? Is that right? These aren't marked because they're not the purple has this like system where you mark the colors. Yeah, this is right. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so why am I switching to this? Control, even though that has a grid on it, which controls the spread, it also kind of brings the light into the center. I want the light to be even. So this is smaller. It's going to give me more control. So all we really want to do is en enhance the light that is on the lower part of her body. This is the same kind of thing you might do if you were um, like just focusing, like let's, she, let's say she did have rings or something we we're trying to. To, to focus on, right? Just give that little extra oomph. All right, I probably, this could probably be lower, but let's start here. All right, that's gonna hit the ground too much. Boop. Actually, the horizontal. All right. Okay, let's take this, and instead of just like messing around and making it hard for you guys to see what's going on, let's do this. Let's take A, turn the head on. Let's turn our modeling lights on. Let's kill this. All right, so let's look at what we've got here. Right? Oh, well, I can see that. The bottom half of her body is dark, brighter. We're trying not to get, I can see some light hitting her in the face, so it's, it is kicking up a little bit. Don't really want that. Lower this down a little bit until we're not really getting much. I might still have to flag it. I think that should be pretty good. Let's fire the lights independently. So this is just the top. This is just the bottom. Okay. So we are seeing there's some kick up light over in our face. So we're going to have to make sure that, but the exposure on it's a little bit low. So I think we'll be, I think we're going to flag that a little bit. Yeah, can we flag that, Seth? Or would you be able to flag that? Or I'll use a clip. Yeah. Oh, I can't. Yeah. I'm over here running your stream. You right. know. You're going to use an actual flag? I 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I do have one flag, but that's okay. That, that worked like that, though, kind of at a dip. Is that going to get in your show? Probably. Yeah. All right, I'll try that. The old white flag. Uh, okay. <laughs> white flag, why not? White flag. Again, we're not really concerned with. Uh, Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay, so now we've got light on the bottom half of her, not hitting the top half of her. It's a little underexposed, so I'm just gonna, but I'm gonna keep that in mind. I'm gonna turn the B light back on. So now we can know what each of these lights is doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah and we're not getting that weird light. Now, now it's just a matter of taking that light, which is A, and I'm gonna switch it to manual. Yep, yeah, we could. And I'm just going to turn it up a little bit, maybe a little bit more. What's also cool is if you wanted to, you can run this one cold modeling light. There's one more kind of orange modeling light actually sees. So oh, yeah, right. You can change the modeling lights. Right, that's actually true too as well. So <laughs> that's nice. So I don't know if you can. Yeah. It's almost like gelling the light so you can see which each one's hitting. Yeah, let me do live view and see if that looks. So we, I don't know if they can see it through the thing. Let me see. I'll switch to live view. Um, all right, so you can see, I mean, it doesn't look great because this is actually not, but if you look at the top half of her, the, uh, that's the top modeling light, and you can see how cool it is, and then the bottom half is this warm modeling light, so we can see where they're both hitting. That's actually a really good idea. Thank you, Seth. All right, but anyways, as we're set up now, now, what's, what, why would we do it this way as opposed to backing them off, I guess, is the question. Right, would it, would it flag it if you touched it underneath? Not really, not unless you pushed it way back, right? Uh, and in fact, I think the shoes are still a little on the dark side, so I think we're gonna turn that light up a bit more. I mean, there are black shoes. Yeah. Keep in mind, too, that when you're shooting something that things that are dark and stuff are going to be dark. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast. And these aren't specular lights. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're dark. I could tip this down a little bit, I suppose, if I wanted to. Yeah, I don't think they're going to keep that much detail. There's not much yeah, detail definitely not. Them. Right, 100%. Things can only look the way they look. There we go. All right, so here we are. We've got balance, and we still have that drama that we we're looking at. Now, I could, of course, which is kind of <laughs> would be the simple way to do this, but not create the necessarily the nicest light, in my opinion, would be to just take this light, light here and just back it up, right? If I back the light up enough, the inverse square law will, and the spread of the light, will make the fall off so small that I should be able to get relatively even. Again, this is going to be, if you were something super commercial and you didn't need it to look like dramatic in any kind of way, A is that one, right? That one's being turned off. Okay. There's manual. Let me, let me put it back in detail. <laughs> That's underexposed by a lot. Let's see. What power are we at? So I'll put it all the way up. There's only a 250 watt second light, so it's to get this exposure. On a full line, oh, that's too much. Yeah. So the best way to figure this out, by the way, is to just look at the light. It's a smidge bright, okay. There we go. So what you wanna do is when you look at this, you look and you go, okay, well, let me, let me focus here. Okay. We look at this and we go, okay, that's a bit dark. You see how, bo how boring it is now because we backed the light up. Uh, we can just look at our exposure here. Oh, I actually got to turn down a little bit. That's why. And we go, oh, there we go. Perfect. So actually, there we go. And she's, again, evenly lit, but not really in a good, like, fun way. So what I recommend if you want to do something that's full length and you want to make sure it's lit really evenly is you're going to want to look for something. Either if you do a lot of it and justify it. A strip bank would be a great way to do it. It'll still give you the ability to shape the shot, right? To get. Uh, moving a little, back in the light up, back to the background more, right? 
Right, moving the right when you move the back the light back it, because of the inverse square law, right? Like the light fall off effectively. What happens is now proportionately the distance to cadence to the light and the distance from the light to the background is it, it crunches that ratio. So basically, or spreads it out rather. So what you end up with is a brighter background. So yeah, you, this whole thing's lit with one light and it's flat and it's kind of boring. I probably should raise it a little bit, but the reality is is that. You can do it, right? You can get it even. You just gotta back the light up. I think the problem is when people are shooting full length, if based on what you're saying, is that you go in like this, you're like, I wanna make a beautiful portrait of Cadence, and you put the light like that, and then you make that shot, and then you go, well, her feet are dark. Well, I mean, of course they are, right? Because look at the way the light is. If you're gonna do this using multiple light sources and making sure that you balance them out like we did here so that they don't affect each other, right? When we look at her face here, you don't see that weird light from the bottom because it's not hitting her face because we showed that here. Okay, so if the if the key light is far back and you want to light the background separately, then you need the background to be even further away. Yeah, I mean you just you basically flags, but in the scheme of things, it's not going to be something you can do in a small space. If you're in this space, you're not gonna get the background completely lit separately if I back my key light up three quarters of the way across the studio. It's just not gonna, not gonna happen. The best, but if you are gonna try to do that, what you wanna do is, I'm just gonna do it with a board so you can see, you're gonna wanna take like V-flats and move them in, right, like here and here so that only the smallest amount of light will go past her and hit the background. So that you'll be able to have some control over it but it will not be perfect in a small space like this. For that kind of stuff, you need room. That's really why you need space. And if you are in that kind of situation where you're in a small space like this and you have to light the background separately, then you're better off doing the two lights like I just showed you. It takes a little bit to kind of finesse them to get them exactly at the right exposure, but you can do it. And in the end, it actually creates a nicer light on the subject, in my opinion. You get something that's got more flavor than, than this, right? Flat flavor. And flavor is really the important part, right? When we're shooting, like I kind of talked about at the very beginning, a softbox can just be plain and blah, because a lot of people use them that way. A softbox can be really dramatic. It really depends on how you use the, the piece of equipment that you've got. You need to understand it, why we have different ones. It's not just because we want to have different softboxes, because in different situations, we want to have different boxes, right? If I had a five foot octa, and I want to shoot full length, I could get it closer to her than I could with this one, which would then help compensate for that space, again, in a smaller space, if that makes sense. Any other questions? Okay, maybe, um, maybe we're determining uh, another <laughs> topic for discussion would be getting full, even full length shots in a small space. Maybe we'll play around with that for another demo in the future. I'll be back in two weeks. This is Cadence Frank. We got Seth, last X witness over here. I am Daniel Norton. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit like on this video if you got this far. I hope you like it, at least, at least my jokes anyway, so much. Sure. <laughs> and uh, I also have a podcast. You can check it out, A Voice with Daniel Norton. There is a link to that pinned to the top of the chat. Uh, and I'll see you in a couple weeks.